Amazon's robotic future is unfolding inside a top secret warehouse facility, codenamed Boss 33. The robots in development here could one day solve some of the biggest challenges facing e-commerce by driving efficiencies and improving safety. While many of its competitors are investing in robotics-based fulfillment centers, Amazon, with its army of 750,000, is designing, building, and deploying its own robot workforce, driving profits and market share for Amazon more than its human-dependent rivals. I'm Ali Garfinkel, and this is what's next for Amazon. We are standing outside this unmarked building that hosts some of the most advanced autonomous robots in the world. It's so secret that if you were driving by, you would really have no idea. And most people who work at Amazon don't even know where this place is. If you're investing in Amazon, robots are what Amazon's investing in, according to industry analysts and company representatives. Analysts say that Amazon's goal is to substantially boost margins in its most consumer-facing business, retail. And here at this simulated distribution center, robots are learning how to work alongside humans. This is Proteus, Amazon's first fully autonomous warehouse robot. It may look like a Roomba, but Proteus signals where the robotics revolution is headed, towards robots that are increasingly self-sufficient. Proteus has eight different sensors, five different cameras, and they're for navigation. The primary LiDAR sensor for Proteus is right here. See, it's actually giving me the red light. Its eyes are getting bigger because I got closer, it stopped. And the most special thing about Proteus is that it's autonomous. This is a robot that can move around completely on its own. Unlike most warehouse robots, Proteus is designed to interact with people. Proteus's sensors can distinguish between humans and other robots, and its eyes are programmed to be expressive. The goal, for human workers to feel safe with robots and to be able to understand the robot's needs so the two can work together effectively. What they're trying to do, in my opinion, is lean into automation over time to potentially increase the efficiency of their large fulfillment center network, enabling them to get more products to consumers on a one or two day basis in as cost efficient manner as possible. For Amazon, the financial stakes are high. Consider this. During the pandemic, Amazon hired 327,300 people over the course of 2020. By the end of the year, more than 1 million people were working for Amazon. But about two years later, under macroeconomic pressures like inflation and rising interest rates, the company began cutting its workforce, laying off 27,000 corporate employees over several months. And investors felt the strain. Over the course of 2022, Amazon lost nearly half its value in what was the stock's second worst year ever. Over time, Amazon's increasingly robotic workforce could smooth out booms and busts for both Amazon and its shareholders. It's a long-term investment that began more than a decade ago and still hasn't reached its full potential. While founder Jeff Bezos was personally investing in robotics companies as early as 2008. Why am I feeling so much like Sigourney Weaver? <laughs> Amazon made its first big move in 2012, acquiring industrial robot maker Kiva Systems for $775 million. Today, that facility is known as Amazon Robotics. The robots that you see here are still in development. With these models, Amazon says it's working to solve two of the biggest problems in robotics, manipulation and gripping. One of the most advanced is the AI-driven Cardinal a towering robotic arm that can identify packages and lift up to 50 pounds. Cardinal will one day operate inside Amazon's shipping docks, the final stop for billions of packages a year. More boxes out the door faster, potentially leading to increased profits. For the first time, this robot will be almost playing Tetris with the packages. So we get a super dense shipping container that's gonna make our trailers more efficient and actually increase speed to our customers. Though Amazon has been very open about its commitment to robotics, the company declined to disclose how much it annually spends developing and deploying robots. And analysts Yahoo Finance spoke with also couldn't put a price tag on it. Company watchers suggest that Amazon's robotics investment is hidden away in financial statements under categories like CapEx or technology and content, which Amazon spent over $40 billion on last year. 
Here's what we do know. Amazon is the place where you buy pillows and coffee filters that are delivered, increasingly with the help of robots, to you in two days or less. It's where you watch original shows, movies, and live sports. It's cloud computing and Whole Foods, medical appointments, and gaming on Twitch. The market values Amazon at $1.3 trillion. And in 2022, the company generated $514 billion in revenue. When it comes to US online shopping, they're the leaders by a huge margin. Amazon has a grip on 37% of the e-commerce marketplace. Walmart, their closest competitor, comes in at 6.3%. We're in Madison, Illinois, at one of the largest Amazon warehouses in Chicago. It's also the site of some of the most advanced robotics in the world. The robots here are tied directly to Amazon's bottom line today and to its future, as the company looks to make deliveries faster and cheaper. Over the past 10 years, Amazon has completely upended the shopping experience for consumers in what is now called the Amazon effect. Most companies still cannot deliver Amazon's products. Very few are capable of getting same day, one day, two day delivery. It is a differentiator. You see most e-commerce companies now, instead of really trying to compete, they're just trying to give transparency. I put the issue of delivery time and robotics to the head of Amazon's fulfillment centers, Stefano Perego. Is two-day delivery possible at scale? Is one-day delivery possible at scale without robotics and AI? I think it would be very difficult to do faster deliveries, like a regionalization process without leveraging AI for optimized placement. So on large-scale network, is very important to leverage technology, whether it is robotics or AI, to make sure that we serve the customer with lower cost and faster. Consumers want speed. Wall Street wants efficiency. Robotics is playing a vital part to our strategies. Robots and AI are critical to that process because you take away cost to serve by leveraging robots and you are taking away time by making faster deliveries to customers by leveraging robots. In that sense, AI and robotics help us to make our own future. If you want to drive margins higher, you need to keep costs down. A robot can effectively work 24-7 for relatively fixed costs. But if you can do more volume using robots, they could drive more revenue on the same costs that would generate more profits. According to the American Staffing Association, 74% of Americans believe increased automation will take jobs away from humans. In February of 2023, ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood, a longtime Amazon shareholder, said that by the year 2030, the company could have more robots than employees. Amazon says more robots in its warehouses won't take jobs, that it will create them as more and more people will be needed to work with and repair the technology. The changes that Amazon Robotics promises are still in the making as Amazon works to stay ahead of the competition with faster delivery times. But customers and investors will ultimately be the ones to decide if Amazon's robotics bet has paid off. I'm Madison Mills alongside Yahoo Finance senior reporter Ali Garfinkel. Ali, you know I love this piece, and you got to spend a lot of time with robots here. Uh, in the piece, you talked about CapEx. How did your reporting on this inform how you're thinking about the ROI on robotics investments? Maddie, good morning. It is Great to see you. You know, my takeaway here, Maddie, goes beyond Amazon. This reporting has really changed how I think about robotics investments across the market. I've actually become more broadly skeptical of these robotics investments, and here's why. Robotics is capital intensive, it's iterative, it's complicated. These are long processes. If reporting on Amazon has shown me anything, it's that this robotics can really take a long time to get right. Just because you start investing in robotics today doesn't mean you're going to see the ROI next year, the year after, or even maybe in 10 years at its full potential. The reality is this. We can't yet produce robots en masse the way we do with cars. And I do believe that day will come. But until then, I think investors should actually be thinking about robotics with a little bit of a healthy dose of skepticism. Robots are absolutely valuable, but they are not a quick fix. 
Ali, we're going to talk about that skepticism exactly and more with our panel here. We've got more on how to invest in robotics. So we're going to bring in Ray Wong. He's the principal analyst and founder of Constellation Research. We also have Jason Del Rey here. He's a tech business journalist. He's also the author of Winner Sells All, Amazon, Walmart, and the Battle for Our Wallets. Great to have you both on. And Jason, I want to start with you. As the name of your book suggests, you know these big names very well. So I want to get a sense of the impact robotics investment could have on a name like Amazon in the next five years. How much do you anticipate robotics coming up in Amazon earnings calls? Is it going to get, get a mention or could it be the headline? I, I think I think it will be mentioned more often, but I think it's it's very important to recognize that, um, you know, in, in the last decade, I think we were looking for this Amazon robotics um, advancement to happen even faster than it has. I think the media, maybe maybe even some inside Amazon thought that, um, you know, maybe by now there'd be many fewer workers. And it's just, it's a long, hard problem to solve. Different, They're trying to solve different problems, you know, to, to replicate the human hand in picking and packing of all these items, different shapes and sizes. Um, they're on their way, but I, I would just say, um, you know, they're, they're, they seem to be ahead of the, the pack among e-commerce players, but they still have a long road ahead as well. And Ray, if you had to put a percentage on it, how much do you expect Amazon's margins to improve in its retail business over time due to these robotics? No, it's a great question. And Jason's right. It's going to take some time, but we're talking about the ability to take these margins from 14.5% to high 30s in the future. And that's coming from labor savings. That's coming from the fact that you have less errors. That's also coming from the fact that you got faster, better, and cheaper all in one opportunity. Now, Jason, there are a lot of numbers that we don't know, but there is one that we do, and that's 1.7 billion. That's the amount that Amazon is looking to spend to buy Roomba. Now, what is your sense of the depth of Amazon's ambition in robotics? Is it to make its way all the way into our homes? Yeah, so my opinion on that acquisition is that it, it has just a lot to do with Amazon's uh, intent and play to own as much gadgetry and robotics around the home. So. Everything from Alexa to their uh, ring acquisition years ago to the Blink uh, security acquisition um, and now Roomba. So I see it in sort of that same uh, play, you know, in your home. Yes, you may be on your phone, but you're interacting with a, all sorts of technology and automation and they want to be the number one player there. Is there a chance some of the technology from that acquisition could help robotics and automation in other parts of Amazon? Perhaps, but I don't think that's the main play here for Amazon. Well, Jason, I know you know that space so well, but Ray, I want to bring you in on Amazon's overall strategy to improve margins because robotics is just one small slice of that pie. What else can you tell us about Amazon's overall strategy to bump up returns? Yeah, if you think about what's going on here, I mean, there's a labor cost that's driving everything. And so anything from autonomous vehicles, anything for the ability to do pick, pack and ship, um, really what you're trying to do is figure out how to solve the supply chain and logistics aspect. And the more you put automation, the more you pull AI in place, it allows you to go from human scale to machine scale. And that's really why it's so important to be able to actually think about, right, every process, every opportunity for automation. And of course, it does take a lot of time, like Ali was saying, because to get from 80% to 90%, that's as just as hard as it's to get from 90% to 95%. And each of those incremental improvements just as a result of time and iteration. Um, the other piece that's actually you're seeing is that's just the back end of the operations. The front end of the operations are coming from AI and getting better understanding of what customers want. And so if you get the demand and the supply together and you shape that properly, you can actually improve margins, you can reduce the number of returns, and you can actually get better at pricing. So Amazon obviously isn't the only company that has access to the tools that you're talking about. Jason, I think a lot about a company like Walmart heading into earnings this week, the biggest grocer in the country. To what extent could Walmart leverage robotics either through innovation or acquisitions like we've seen to compete with an Amazon? 
Yeah, I think the important thing for a company like Walmart is to use robotics, you know, to to increase the advantage that they may already have over more pure play e-commerce players like Amazon. And that's really the immediacy of their stores, the ability to order and pick up the same day or have delivery from stores the same day. And so they bought a company called Alert Innovation. They have a system called Al Alphabot that is a retrieval and um, a storage and retrieval system that is built onto the side of a store to help workers um, more quickly pick and pack uh, orders that can be either picked up or delivered that same very same day. And so this is a huge opportunity for them. Um, they need to invest heavily, but yet, you know, they don't have the margins of an AWS helping them. They're starting to build an advertising business that has great margin, but it's much smaller than Amazon. So it will be interesting to see how aggressively they can spend to ramp up. Uh, they have a long way to go. Now, Ray, robotics won't just impact company to company competition. You're expecting it to impact geopolitical competition. How might robotics transform the US China dynamic moving forward? Oh, it's a big factor, right? I mean, think about China, their population dynamics are shrinking over time. They need robots to be able to keep up. They're going to look like Japan in 20 years in terms of their age demographic. Uh, and you're going to see a lot more of that automation that's going to come into place. In the U.S., at least, we still have immigration and a good supply of labor, uh, even though it's been very, very tight. Uh, and in terms of competition, we actually have to be able to catch up from anything from automating the way ports operate to automating what actually happens in the last mile in terms of the distribution, in terms of transportation management, and warehouse management. Those are coming into play. And I think that's really the, the big competition is really our ability to actually move more goods more quickly and be able to do it at lower cost and be able to take up take advantage of more cycles uh, that are being offered when we get to automation. Because automation allows you to get the 24 seven, the robots play a key role in doing that. And whoever can actually compete more quickly to be able to do that is going to win in the geopolitical wars. So Ray, I want to stick with you here for our audience of investors listening. What would you say are the publicly traded robotics companies that investors need to be looking out for? Yeah, there's three that I look at, and I think ABB is the one there. They've been leading in this space for quite some time. FANUC is another one where you're actually seeing a lot of automation, not just in warehouses, but also in manufacturing, and also SMC. Uh, SMC Corp. These three companies are leading in the space, uh, but more importantly, these are publicly traded companies. There's also a number of companies that are not publicly traded that are actually have a lot of innovations in that marketplace. A lot of developments there to watch. Thank you so much for joining us. We had Ray Wan and Jason Del Rey, and of course, a huge thanks to our own Ali Garfinkel.